uh, irritant contact dermatitis versus allergic contact dermatitis, there are minute differences. If you understand the difference between these two, then only you will be able to give a correct diagnosis for these kind of questions. So what do you want, what you should be doing in the exam if you are unable to differentiate an irritant from allergic, just mention contact dermatitis as your diagnosis if you are in doubt. It's because there are some scenarios wherein uh, initially the same element or let's consider the element as X acts like an irritant initial part. Then later on what happens, the same irritant due to continuous irritation and also change in immunopathogenic mechanism, it will now start acting like an allergen, right? So irritant contact dermatitis in the long run predisposes to allergic contact dermatitis. What is common here? The contact is common here. So that's the reason this contact dermatitis is very important topic. Now in that you have an allergic variant and you also have an irritant variant. There is no clear distinction and it is given in most of the standard textbooks. Even a dermatologist will not know whether it's an irritant or an allergen unless we do some gold standard test called skin patch test. If a patient is presenting to a dermatologist, most of the times irritant contact dermatitis is acute in onset. It does not require any prior sensitization. There is rapid development of symptoms within few hours of exposure and injury is not because of immunomechanism. Injury is because of inherent irritant property of the compound and the, the response, the irritant contact dermatitis response depends upon the concentration of the agent. Okay. And what is the state of the skin? And the lesions are pretty sharp. They are confined to the site of exposure. And in general, not always, there is absence of vesiculation. Vesiculation is characteristic of most of the times the allergic contact dermatitis. And as we stop applying the irritant, if you, if you start reducing the dosage of the application, then the symptoms will improve. And most of the times, irritant contact dermatitis is a self-diagnosis. If you have a uh, construction worker who is having contact with cement immediately after uh, contact with the cement he is developing some reaction uh, a washerwoman uh, after touching a detergent suddenly developing it so these kind of things are self-diagnosable you don't need a dermatologist for this diagnosis and most common irritants because this is important because in the exam they might give you these clinical scenarios soap detergent, any chronic wet work or occupational exposure that is cement workers. These are all the irritant contact dermatitis. Okay. These are all the irritant contact dermatitis. Now you have allergic contact dermatitis here. It is actually not compound irritation. It is actually because of the immune response. Okay. It is because of the immune response. It is a delayed type of hyper. When I say delayed, it is not rapid. It takes almost 72 hours to develop and a prior exposure, prior sensitization is necessary for this compound to develop hypersensitivity and it allergen amount or dosage or frequency. It is independent of all these factors and lesions are not just confined to site of contact. They can be seen somewhere else apart from the site of the contact and you need to completely avoid the allergen for uh, symptoms to subside. In irritant contact dermatitis, if you decrease the duration and frequency, slowly the body will adapt. But that is not the usual case here. And what is the gold standard test which we use for diagnosing this? Actually, dermatologists will diagnose allergic contact dermatitis and it is with the help of a skin patch test. And what are the most common allergens encountered? Hair product allergens, antibiotics, preservatives and metals metals which are present in the artificial jewelry and even hair dye products are henna. These are the two questions they asked in the past, okay, based on the clinical scenario.